Um, so, so uh, forgive me if I, I talk more in, if you like, I, I guess we'd say electromechanical terms, um, purely because um, when, when we talk about, you know, when we talk about a transducer, I mean, we're only talking really about a coil and a cone, aren't we, really, guys? I mean, let's be honest. I mean, when we, when we take a, you know, one, when we take, there we go. Right. So, there we go. I've had a couple of them around. Now are a bit delicate, but, um, yeah, thanks. So, okay, well, I'm going to hang on to this bit. So, um, I mean, it's blindingly, it's, well, blindingly is the wrong word, probably, but I mean, they are very, very simple devices, aren't they, really? Yeah, which we'll, we'll sort of obviously <laughs> get into as we go along. Uh, Stefan, what, so half an hour? Is that what you want? Or whatever you guys want, actually. Uh, because this, because once, once we've got past, you know, the sort of, let's say the trade secrets, because I want to give a few of those away today. Um, well, yeah, I do. For, because, you know, I think it's time we exploded a few myths about drivers. Scott will do then explode a few myths about boxes. And then Stefan, of course, will get his sword bandsaw out. Where's the other back? My background is, uh, technically, I'm a gas dynamicist. So, so my interest as an engineer, as a, as a mech engineer, is the properties of gas dynamics, which do relate very closely to the properties of transferring electrical energy into mechanical energy, into sound wave energy, and the losses thereof. Every time you, uh, if I'm preaching to the converted, forgive me, but well, why not? Every time we, 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 we turn one form of energy into another form of energy, we get a loss. Quite simply, the approach I've taken to driver design is relatively straightforward. Uh, I would best describe it as the, now there's a, lo I'm gonna, I'm gonna, there's a Lotus here, as the Colin, School, Colin Chapman School of Engineering, which is shed mass, get rid of mass. I mean, I'll borrow the, borrow the board now. I mean, I mean if, we, if we take, um, just a, 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 if we take any driver, well, let's just, just stick with a full range driver, I mean, yeah, I mean, we've, we've, we've sorry, I'm left-handed. So, we, you know, we've, we've got uh, low frequency through to high, high frequency output. This end, this end is mostly mechanical. This end is mostly resonance. Uh, am I, tell me, if, you might know all this, but I just want to, so this end, this end of the, you know, this end of the, I'll draw a map here. And we'll, let's bung in, say, 100 hertz, for example. Let's just bung in uh, 10 kilohertz here. You know, there's our cone. Um, at this end, the thing's going to be oscillating. At this end, it's going to be resonating. Oscillation, mechanical, resonance, static. Now, actually, you know, you and I, were, you were, we were talking about how cars go through bends and so on. Mm -hmm. about, we're talking about weight transfer. Um, there are lots of similarities. There are lots of, you know, I mean, it's this old trick of trying to stand on one leg and juggle with, you know, at the same, <laughs> yeah, where you want a driver to do two things at once. And the, the holy grail of full range or wide band driver <laughs> design is to try to get a single emitting surface to oscillate and resonate all at the same time. You think, oh, it's not too difficult. I mean, you know, just give it a bit more power at the low end and give it a, give it a low a low a low frequency, forty hertz, and it's going to move. It's a, it's a you know, it's a coil and a cone. It's an alternating current, so it's you know, it's switching, boom that way, switch it back, and it goes that way. Um, but if you look, how many have you got full range drivers, by the way? I mean, have you, have you all mostly, have, or you've dabbled with full range drivers? Frost X's? 
things like that, prostexes and that, that, lothers, lothers. Just yours. Just, oh my gosh, I'm <laughs> honoured. <laughs> Typically, um, to cut a long story short, if you go and buy a traditional full range driver, and they're good, we were listening to some audio environments yesterday, yeah. weren't we, at the show. Full range drivers are, are usually pretty good at this end, in the, in the, in, in the, in, in, in the resonance side. Uh, just so that you guys know, what we're really talking about resonance is the cone doesn't move, it just effectively surface vibrates. Okay. Okay. Oops. Sorry about that. If yeah, I miss on. anything, yeah. the rooms don't <laughs> shout up. Because, uh, you know, I've got to gauge where you guys are at and you need to tell me that. So don't be frightened if you say, oh, what does that mean, Mark? Please, please ask me. I know nothing about speakers or drivers at all. That's right. like your starting thing for me. And then I'll slow down a bit and make sure... Sorry, uh, guys. I'll speak <laughs> <a little bit>. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, it's important, point, actually. The, the resonance bit's just the bending and deflection of the current itself. Okay. Yeah, in effect, it, mm -hmm. it's... Um, so if I low low frequency sound, we're we're going to have a quite a gap between the high and the low. So you get a you get a low frequency sound on on a oscilloscope will look something like that, you know, and we can measure that in hertz, and that'll be well, typically. Um, sorry, young lady, but let's say a a a a a a pig that uh, lets out gas. Mm -hmm. We'll be at somewhere at about probably 14 hertz, 14 <laughs> okay. cycles per second, roughly. Should we have had too much beer one night? And we're probably operating at around 20 hertz in, in an embarrassing fashion. Let's put it that way. Okay. Have you measured that or are you guessing? No, it is. Yeah. Some, somebody's <laughs> measured it. Remember, we're right? Brits, so we're bound to measure it. <laughs> uh, well, we don't have to be Brits. I mean. um, whereas. Uh, we're all using mobile phones, most of us, and Scott will help you with this a bit. Um, the, if we're using mobile phones and stuff like that, typically we're talking about the telephonic band, that's 400. 200 hertz to 4 kilohertz. 4 kilohertz. Okay. So if you're familiar, yeah, you know, familiar with your mobile phone, it's going to be... I'll, I'll borrow a bit of sheet. Two two hundred hertz to four kilohertz. Okay, four. Put your glasses on, Mark, so you see what you're doing. <coughs> to four four kilohertz. I will get a new board. So that's voice, vocal. That's the vocal range. As I'm talking now, I say I'm around about. No, my voice is around about one point seven. 1.8, maybe 2 kilohertz ish ish. If somebody treads on my tongue, I'll go, ouch! Then I'll go up to about 4 kilohertz. Um, so when it comes to music, most musical instruments from the, the, the church organ, which is you know right down low, pipe organ probably gets down to about 25 hertz, maybe a bit lower than some of the really spectacular cathedral organs. And then you get right up to the triangle and you're talking about 15 kilohertz, 16 kilohertz, roughly around that. You can actually go on the internet and look up, you know, musical instruments, frequency range, and that's fairly typical. So whenever you're playing music uh, of almost any kind, you're going to be somewhere at the lowest, the source that you're using, the CD or whatever it is, We'll be putting out a signal that will be something from very, very low, 25, 30 kilohertz through to 15, 16 kilohertz. And that's the, that's the range that that pretty well 99% of music is in. And if you're young, like the young ladies over there, their hearing will be 15 hertz to about... 20 kilohertz, yeah, we'll all still be tops. Time. When you get to my age, you're lucky if you can hear 15 kilohertz. 14, I've got. 14, yeah, mm. thereabouts. Which is interesting <coughs> because um, 
full range drivers, a good full range driver will cover 90% of that frequency range, you know. So one of the myths that's nice to explode today before we get onto the mechanics of a full range driver and just explore oscillation and resonance a bit more is that when you know when you, you look in the in the adverts through I don't know Mac Parts Express or wherever you buy your DI kits from or you want to buy drivers um, and you see 40 kilohertz for a tweeter <coughs> You know, or 80 kilohertz from um, sort of Wolf Dow Diamond, is it? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, something like that. Um, I, I'd always say to you, you know, be a little bit wary because um, we don't need it. We don't, we don't really need it. It's nice to have, but we don't really need it. When it comes to, when it comes to, uh, to producing a sound wave pattern from a transducer. I, I would say to you guys, whether you choose Mark Audio or not, you don't, you know, I'm not, you, you choose whatever drivers you want. But I would always say to you, if you want to do a two-way, rather like this beastie, then when you look at the high-range driver, anything up to 30 kilohertz, trust me, is more than enough, honestly. Um, don't, don't waste your money on buying really super duper expensive tweeters. I, I do make tweeters as well, but, but mostly for the Japanese market, and they go up to 30 kilohertz, and even that is more than they need. You know, you're not necessarily, you're not going to, bandwidth is not a, Wide bandwidth, super wide bandwidth, is not not going to actually get you a better sound. Now you'll read literature from all sorts of people that says it will. I can only say to you, as a as a designer manufacturer, because we manufacture that, that driver is man. I've been on a production line up until uh, when when my health was sadly not so good. You would see me on a production line with the guys and girls physically assembling them myself. I probably assembled myself, uh, I don't know, over the years, 20, 30,000 drivers physically on the line in the early days. So, full range drivers, cone, coil. Let me just talk a little bit, very briefly, about a full range driver and a traditional full range driver and a Mark Audio full range driver and then let's see if that helps. It's also worth saying while we're talking about um, bandwidth yeah. isn't it that um, yeah. most um, most of the sources everybody listens to are bandwidth limited anyway. Mm. Indeed. Um, so you know there's not, yeah. not really that much CDs. Yeah, I mean, uh, yes. CDs, CDs, CDs to 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 21. Actually Mark made a very good point uh, yeah. with that that I think it's worth stressing uh, when you're talking about resonance there. Yeah. Now, uh, if you go on the, the majority of the forums, you will see the dreaded word, break up. Oh, oh it's break up, oh, it's resonance. Yeah. Uh, well, guess what, lads? It's a physical impossibility to create a moving coil full mm -hmm. range driver, or wide band driver, that isn't resonance. Mm -hmm. By definition, it can't do it. Mm -hmm. uh, so if you ever see that, uh, you'll know that whoever is so like, oh no, it's, it's perfect piston, it's, uh, it's oh, evil resonance, you mustn't have it. Um, oh, well, you know they don't know what they're talking about, mm. basically. That's the blunt reality of it. They have to resonate, otherwise they ain't going to have any energy. That's it. No frequency Period. at the top end. So, if I... Uh, I mean, we're happy that all we're looking at with that is that for the low frequency we want it to be mechanical. It's going to oscillate, so you push air and create a low frequency mechanical sound. And then when it gets towards the middle and the top, so we're talking what vocals 400, 500 hertz, 4 kilohertz, and upwards, all that's going to happen, as you said earlier, is that it's going to 